breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. All right, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of Brainstorming with the Docs. I'm Dr. Colby Condos, my co-host as always, Dr. Glenn Harrison. How's it going, buddy? Doing great. Doing great. So how was the trip? You were on a trip. It was great. Yeah. Uh, came back refreshed. Uh, came mm, back with some frostbite. new insights. Yeah, it was cold. It was cold <laughs> for sure. Uh, I think the first day we got there, it was like negative 22. And I was like, what are we doing? So look at that. Look at that. Well, I'll be, I'll be going that way fairly soon. Yeah, so. you're going to get it's going to get colder because you're going further. You're going up yeah, north. But did, did you notice that that it was a little darker up there? Oh, hundred percent. Like got dark super early. You know, the one time we got done and I was like, what time is it? It's like, oh, it's three 30. It's like, yeah. what it, did it affect your morning routine? <laughs> it may have. I will tell you this though. When we, uh, some of the things that we're going to discuss today, we were def- definitely implementing as far as like regulating our sleep patterns. Um, so today on brainstorming, we're talking about why your morning routine is so important and the secrets that we use to help with our morning routines. If this is your first time watching or listening and you get value out of this content, please hit like and subscribe and turn on notifications because we're going to continue to roll out new content like this occasionally and we hope that that is applicable to you. So why is it so important and what is your secret, Dr. Glenn, to Uh, your morning routine? Well, it's a challenge, I'd say. I'd say that'd be the the easiest thing. It's a challenge. But, um, you know, why is a morning routine so important? I think I think that that's the biggest thing. Um, and and you see it as well as I do. Uh, a lack of a morning, of the proper morning routine affects every aspect of health, uh, both physical and emotional. I, I think without a doubt that, that that is just static. It's just standard. And and there's so many things that affect that morning routine. So so we don't even have the oper- If if we have a messed up. <laughs> for lack of a better explanation, a messed up morning routine. There's nothing in, in our, our, our metabolic functioning and, or our emotional, you know, our emotional status that is going to be good. We don't even have the opportunity to start out, the, start our day on the right foot. It's just that it's that simple. And the problem with a, a, a you know, a, a bigger problem with a dysfunctional morning routine is how it spirals into the next day, the next day, the next day, the next day. And, and it is until the weekend comes up where we actually, you know, maybe we recover a little bit. So it, it, that's one of the, I guess, one of the reasons, one of the reasons it's, it, uh, it establishes everything. It establishes, it establishes our, our sleep wake cycle. So our, our circadian rhythm, um, if our, if our morning is dialed in well, our circadian rhythm, our sleep, wake, wake cycles would be improved. Kind of like maybe when you were on your trip, right? You were, mm-hmm. you were on a hunting trip. So you were up extra early and probably to bed relatively early too. I early think. to bed, early to rest, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that's one thing that, uh, uh, why our morning routine is very important. Um, cortisol rhythm. So cortisol rhythm, so our cortisol to optimize our cortisol rhythm, we need to be able to maintain a very, very structured, uh, sleep wake cycle and our circadian and our cortisol rhythm, um, is, is absolutely necessary for all energy function and energy is, is, is the bloodline for any kind of recovery, immune modulation, uh, immune, immune tolerance and immune strength. So, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing more important than sleep and sleep is closely associated with a morning routine. And then, as I mentioned, it sets, it sets the emotional landscape. So if we wake up, uh, in, in a frantic stressed, <laughs> sleep deprived state, there's no way we can have a good day. There's just, it's just impossible. Sometimes we luck out and things turn, but you know, why are mornings criticized as being the, or Mondays that criticized as being the worst day of the week is well, because of the weekend, right? Yeah. Your sleep we, cycle goes to crap. That's your, right. Your habits that you've implemented all week go to yeah. pot. So yeah. it's, it really is important. Um, mm. I mean, we've talked about this previously in our For sleep sure. episode. So if you guys are, have more questions on like that, um, like why sleep is so important. Give that a listen. This is really kind of a good piggyback off of that. Um, and actually a lot of the other podcasts as well, because we talk about coffee, we talk about all this stuff. So that also would tie really, really well into this. So some things that people use to help with their morning routine that necessarily you don't want to use, right? And, and things that you want to look for if your morning routine is not being as 
efficacious as it could Mm -hmm. would be like if you're really slow starting you know you wake up you don't feel really well rested you don't feel like you're ready to tackle the day you're feeling overwhelmed right away um you feel like you're overly reliant on coffee or caffeine you know this is something that i'm maybe a little bit guilty of it's like a guilty pleasure where i really like it so i consume too much of it Mm -hmm. um if you wake up and you're really foggy you know you don't feel like you can concentrate you don't and honestly i mean all of us have had this you wake up and you're like oh my gosh i'm really groggy yeah, you, know, you don't yeah, want it, that. That's right, and 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 you know, it, it's it's never static where every morning is going to be perfect, but the vast majority of our morning should be ideal. They they really yeah. should be. Yep. And then when you know, we'll talk about some strategies once you start implementing it, them in, and if there's improvement, the you know there should be much fewer days of of having a crappy morning than than not. Right? There's much much fewer days. It should be an anomaly. To Absolutely. Wake up. I yeah. I use this kind of phrase in my clinic when I tell people I was like every because everyone might go you know I'm still having x symptoms I go okay so I break it down as like okay what is the frequency you're having them you know Mm -hmm. what is the severity you're having them and what is the duration that you're having them you know so if you're having issues in the morning and you start start implementing these sleep strategies or these these morning routines right and then all of a sudden you're like well I'm still having them well how often I don't know one out of seven well how much was it before I don't know every day you know or how Mm -hmm. bad if you have the you know, the fogginess or nausea is another one that you can have in the morning if your blood sugars are all over the place. You know, how often are you nauseous? Well, usually like two out of every seven. How bad is it? Well, if I, I eat, it usually goes away. Yeah. So then you're looking at, is it getting better? Is it happening less frequently? And when it is happening, is it less severe? Yeah. Right? And, I, and, and I think those are great questions because I think a lot of times people forget when they're in the trenches, they, 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 they're looking for daylight. <laughs> like everything is perfect. And, and, and they forget that there's a trickle effect of improvement. Mm -hmm. Um, So those are some of the things that we don't want. (laughs) Now, what, what is our morning supposed to be like? And I I touched on a little bit, but what are some characteristics of our morning? What should it look like? Well, you want to wake up feeling well rested and like alert, right? Mm -hmm. You want increase, like improvement in mental clarity. You want to feel like you have energy um, and you want to wake up. Honestly, one of the biggest things for me is I can tell when my rest cycle is really well and that my morning routine is really like has become habitual is when I wake up like a couple minutes before my alarm goes off. That's right. You know, yeah. if my alarm's set for 630, I'm getting up at 628 or something. And, like and that. like you said, rested, not not just waking up before your alarm clock because because you've been looking at the walls and, and couldn't fall back asleep, but actually waking up and 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 you know and and being ready to go. And you're like, wow, the alarm didn't hit yet. And you're like couple minutes off right so then yep. that's that's perfect um so so we're talking about what is good what is a normal sleep what is a bad sleep why it's important uh i want to touch on another thing why it's so important i know you see this in clinic any chron- we're working with chronic illness all the time and that's kind of the focal point of functional medicine um any chronic illness pulls people out of a uh, proper sleep hygiene and see- sleep cycles it's one of the first things that compromise sleep, whether it's pain or who knows what else is, is disrupting sleep. But so chronic illness affects this sleep cycle. But when our sleep rhythm, when our, when our sleep routine and our morning routine gets compromised, it just fuels that chronic illness and it just goes out of control. Um, so it, it's a contributor to chronic illness. It amplifies chronic illness. Um, and if it's not kept in check, it, it just, it just, Again, it amplifies. It illness. amplifies it, right? Self-amplifying loop. So yeah. So so how do we do this? Well, there's there's a few things. I know we we beat this up in the world of sleep and stuff like that. But you know, bedtime effort, sleep hygiene. I always talk about this. It's it's something I work with uh, with everybody I I work with, every one of my patients, and and it's something that that I have a hard time. It's personally the hardest thing for me to stay to stick to. So sleep hygiene, avoiding both uh, visual stimulation and emotional stimulation before bed. So visual stimulation is any screen. We're looking at these right now. And if you're watching this, you're listening to it. If, if you're listening to it, maybe you're not getting it. But the frequency of blue light is a vast, powerful neural stimulant that will disrupt your sleep. And most people need a minimum of one hour of avoidance of this before bed. Minimum. That's just visual. And it, because we have primitive brains, our brains don't understand this blue light and it, and our brains don't really even understand the big lights of our, of our home. So our brains think it's daytime and then we shut them off and we say, okay, brain, go to sleep. We're ready. It's like, no, it's not that easy. And you might fall asleep, but you won't get into the deep sleep. You won't get into the recovery sleep. So a lot of times people will toss and turn more or, 
you know, or are they, then they won't have a high quality sleep. So avoiding the visual stimulation and the light stimulation, a minimum of one hour before bed. And then the second thing is the emotional stimulation. This is a thing that, that I catch myself all the time. Maybe like I was telling you tonight, I'll work a little bit too late, you know, and, and, and I still allow for my hour break, but I work too intensely up to my hour break and my mind is still traveling and traveling and traveling. And then I, I still have enough sleep still I allow for enough sleep, but I wake up in the morning and I don't feel rested. Or Why you're not it? like, you might be allowing for that sleep. You're laying in bed, but you're not even like, you're not sleeping, right? Oh, I was in bed for eight hours. Well, how much of that was actually productive sleep? That's, that's you know? right. That, that's right. And, and the emotional component in it might, you know, some people, it might be work. Sometimes it might be chores. Some people might be taskless. Some, it could be a friend or a family calling them late at night or before bed to vent. <laughs> and, uh, it might, we might not think it's directly affecting us, but it is. There, there's a component of it. So our brains don't really understand an emotional stress with, or, a, or, or any other you know, immediate threat. And our primitive brain lights up and, and we start, you know, what is that the limbic system is priming? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yep. it primes the limbic system and it just keeps spooling and spooling and spooling. And then you know, I did my work. You know, I, I, I stayed away from blue light. I, I stayed away from screens. I allowed for enough sleep. Why do I still feel tired in the morning? Just take a look back at what your sleep routine was and what kind of stressors or stimulants that you, you were exposed to from an emotional uh, component before bed. So very, well, I very think important. that you just tied into another good point where you said like avoiding stimulants, right? This isn't just like stressors, right? This yeah. can legit be stimulants. This can be things like caffeine, yeah. you know, energy drinks, whatever the, whatever you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. if you're using them periodically to prop yourself up throughout the day, um, or, it, or say even just like enjoy, them, you know, like coffee, like I, I like coffee, uh -huh. taste of it. Well, here's the thing. Like I'm, I literally have to go, okay, after 11 o'clock, no more coffee. That's right. Yeah. So trying to keep it to the morning and, and, you know, and everybody's a little different. So you, depending on where you're starting out with and you have a crappy sleep or, or, you know, your metabolism's down or you think morning routine is, needs to be improved and you're listening to this, you know hit the basics first, right? Like, like we talked about in, in our, our sleep, sleep podcast that we did hit the basics first and then start dialing it in. But, but, you know, you gotta, like you always say, Dr. Colby, so you gotta walk before you can run. Um, yep. I, I, once I've dialed it in more and more and more, I catch myself. I used to have two cups of coffee every morning. It was just, you know, if I have uh, appointments from home, well, I have a nice cup of warm coffee and then gave me the warm fuzzies. You know how it is. It's just that relaxing piece that we, we, we associated with so many other things. And then I said, well, you know, I, I was sleeping better and better and better and, uh, and other strategies. And so, well, you know, maybe I'm just going to try one cup, but I still wanted that warm sensation. So yeah. I would have tea. I'd have, you know, uh, uh, uncaffeinated tea. And I was like, ah, oh, it's kind of the same. It's warm. <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't mind, I'm not a tea person, but I didn't mind this tea. So it was unbelievable within two days, my sleep drastically changed and I was still keeping my caffeine early in the morning. Like I wasn't even going past you know, 10 30. So does that mean it's the same for everybody? Does it? No, you're drinking coffee throughout the day, cut it off, let it be a noon thing. That's it. Or whatever work on these sleep hygiene pieces and then see, and then do that for a, a week. A lot of people will start dreaming. It's so interesting that if my mom's listening to this, I remember her, she, she was having a, she was having some sleep problems. I can talk about her on here, I think. And uh, <laughs> I'll find out. Thanks, Mrs. Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, and then I, I told her, we'll try this and try this. And and this was a uh, last year or something when I was, was out for Christmas and she, uh, she said, you know, I've had, I said, she never talked to me about her sleep. And I was like, well, well, how are you doing? And this was over the phone when I was back in Colorado. And she's like, you know, it, she never complained about sleep. So I was kind of wondering what that was. Her, her concern was, was her dreams were so weird. I've been dreaming all the time. And I, I just, I just don't. And I'm like, well, that means you were sleep deprived for how long? <laughs> yeah. A few decades, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. didn't say that to her. Well, now she'll hear it, but <laughs> <laughs> now she knows. <laughs> now she knows. Along so, with the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people will start dreaming more frequently, more vivid dreams once they put these pieces into place. That's what, that's a normal sleep pattern. So, um, so stimulants, you talked about that and also alcohol, alcohol is a major player in, yep. in the compromise. You might feel life. like you're getting rest with alcohol. You're not getting deep restful, like restful sleep. That's right. Unless you go overboard and, you know, you had help to get into your house or something. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, the other thing, like I preach this a lot to my patients is because we talked about the importance of like the cortisol rhythm and stuff like that. And this actually could tie back into what we were talking about where I was on this trip, right? Why is it that when you're doing something like hunting or you're going backpacking or whatever, that you're able to like, you're sleeping in a, on a sleeping bag on a crappy, you know, blow up mattress or foam mattress or whatever you're doing. And as nice as they are now, they're not still not your mattress. It's, why is it that you get such restful sleep when you're doing that, right? And it's because first thing in the morning, what are you doing? You you're establish going, activity. You yeah, establish you're performing activity. some sort of physical exertion, which mm-hmm. is going to promote the release of your cortisol and help you basically establish that cortisol rhythm throughout the day. So that's right. That that you can't discount the import. Like, and even you, I know part of your morning routine is you get up. You know, you get up pretty early, and then you go walk your dog, and then you go to the gym. Right? Yeah, you go mm-hmm. to the gym, then walk your dog, whatever, whichever. That, that changes everything. That changes the depth of my sleep and the ability to fall asleep and get it. I always tell people about the circadian rhythms. Morning should be, I don't want to say abrupt because a lot of people in North America, it's abrupt. They're running out the door. They're trying to take care of kids. But I want to say, I want to say it shouldn't, we should get, be able to get moving relatively quickly with when we as soon as we, we wake up, that's some kind of blood flow. That's something. So, so between bedtime, sleeping and waking, it should be relatively distinct lines it should it should be relatively clear from sleeping to waking up but bedtime should be it should be a gray area of a constant decline you go back because we're primitive i always always say we're all we're all just cavemen with different clothes and now our caves are different our our brain is still a caveman so we and we we can't trick ourselves so we should go back to the cave it should be safe we got away from the saber-toothed taggers all of that fun stuff it's warm there's no threats and we can have a nice, peaceful, decompressed sleep. Um, modern day, we, you know, maybe we're not running away from saber two taggers, but we lift up our phone and we blare ourselves with blue light. Now our brain is primed of, of some news from the other side of the world that doesn't involve us, but it's an immediate threat. It's like we're <laughs> just running away from a saber two tagger. Well, that's and, the, like your brain doesn't differentiate stress, no. right? I tell this to my right. patients too. It doesn't matter if you're running from a grizzly bear or studying for a calculus test. <laughs> like it's, a, it responds like, like based the same way, mm-hmm. you know, it produces the same hormones. It produces the same outcomes. So it doesn't differentiate different types of stress. So you want to avoid stressors if you can, whether that's a fight with your spouse, I'm not saying you should avoid fighting with your spouse or whatever, but maybe just don't do it right before you're going to go to bed. <laughs> maybe you should do it in the morning. So you get the cortisol released. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, something, but it, it, it's powerful. So when it comes, I guess, to morning routine, morning routine is all about bedtime routine. It starts with bedtime routine, but the morning routine will facilitate the next day's bedtime routine. And, and, and I think just a couple little things like this, it takes a lot of discipline to do this because it just does, but, you know, hold the line for one solid week. You will see changes in one week and then build on that. I don't know how many people that I've worked with were metabolically compromised. And one of the biggest things that we implemented was proper sleep hygiene, proper morning routine, consistent morning routine. And that was the, 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 a very, very big catalyst to get them out of the dark place they were in. You know, it, it, it's crazy, you know, and, and I, I always say, you know, the, 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 the most, the most prescribed medication in, in North America is for pain. The second most prescribed medication is for sleep. Why is that? You know, why is that? Lots of reasons. Some of these will fix them. <laughs> so Yeah. Think about implementing these strategies. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you got value and actually why we're, why we still have you guys on here, something to consider as well uh, with brainstorming with the docs, we're actually moving into an educational series mm-hmm. um, that we are going to offer to uh, our listeners so stay tuned for that. We're going to come up with unique courses and stuff like that. Would help. That's going to help with some um, bridging more gaps. Yeah, bridging gaps. Whereas if you're looking to not only look at some alternatives or maybe some adjunct um, care or or ways that you can help yourself more than anything, yeah, is the whole desire of this, where we give you the tools and the educational piece that can maybe help you take some of your health into your own hands. Um, so stay tuned on that. We're actually working on some some conditions right now that we're breaking down uh stay tuned that's going to be coming uh in the future for sure Uh, again if you got value out of this make sure you hit like and subscribe and turn on notifications because we're going to continue to roll out this content regularly um and let us know if you have any questions or comments or there's anything that you'd like us to cover 
or get a hold of us at, or interesting yeah, in, topics and courses. That that's another thing. So yeah, we're, if we're, there's we're something we're, we're currently navigating through the the different topic ideas we're gonna gonna deliver. So yeah, if you have ideas for that, you can get a hold of us. We have an email. It's info at brainstormingwiththedocs.com. You can get a hold of us on our individual websites. Mine is northlakeschiropractic.com. Dr. Glenn's is drgharrison.com. And again, stay tuned because we're going to continue to roll out new content and hopefully we come out with something that's applicable and useful to you. That sounds good. Well, I look forward to tomorrow's morning routine. All right, buddy. Sounds good. Bye-bye.